Uh, what part does rituals play on a spiritual path? What did Bhagwan teach us about that? Bhagavan was not prescriptive, that is to say, he didn't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. He, um, there was an innate sense of humility in him that somehow he didn't feel it was his job to tell other people what to do unless they themselves approached him and asked. And even within that particular constraint, he didn't feel that it was his job to tell them to change what they were doing if they were happy with what they were practicing. So a standard conversation would be Bhagavan, please give me some teaching, please give me some practice. And Bhagavan would say, well, what are you doing? And if the person said, I'm chanting Krishna's name, he'd say, very good, carry on. So a lot of people would come to him who had uh, a long established practice of ritual worship and they had great faith in its efficacy and never ever would he criticize them for doing it and if other people tended to look down their noses at people who were worshipping statues as a rather primitive form of religious expression he would criticize them he would say you, you're telling this person off for doing idol worship but you, you, you yourself are doing idol worship every day you take your body to be the idol you bathe it, you clothe it, you, you treat it as if it's some great god, that's your idol worship, you're worshipping your body. Don't, don't criticize other people who extrovert their spiritual inclinations into objects of worship. There's one man uh, that springs to mind when you say this. He, he was a kitchen worker called Natasha Iyer. Natasha Iyer uh, came to Bhagavan with a very strong ritual practice. He would clean, decorate and worship a set of, I think, five images in his room every day. And his room was somewhere between the dining room and the cow shed at Ramanashram. Bhagavan would walk that way every day to inspect the cows, to make sure they were being properly looked after, to give advice to the people who worked there. And every day Natasha Iyer would wait outside his room and say, Bhagavan, I've cleaned my idols, I've decorated them, I've worshipped them, please, please come in and have a look. And every day for two years, Bhagavan would come in and say, very nice, very good. This, this for me displayed an extraordinary patience with a man who just didn't seem willing to <laughs> progress from his worship of these five statues. Bhagavan knew it was good for him, he knew it was the right thing at that point. And then one day, Bhagavan was invited in for his usual daily inspection and he just casually commented, oh you're still doing this are you? Not critical, not suggesting a change, but it was a light bulb moment for Natasha Iyer. He suddenly realized that this particular form of practice had run its course. He carefully wrapped up all his idols, uh, immersed them in one of the neighborhood teatums, that's what you do with religious objects. Uh, that you no longer need. You, you give them a kind of ritual disposal by putting them in a holy tank. And after that, his path was more abstract. It was just surrender to Bhagavan. I think Bhagavan would accept that certain people had religious predilections which tended towards uh, ritual worship, ritual practices. He would never ever tell them not to. But I think at some point, in most people's lives a day would come when they'd think well I don't need to do this anymore uh, and of their own volition they would stop and Bhagavan would generally approve of whatever it was they were doing stopping and moving on to something else but I don't recall a single instance of him ever um, making that happen against the wishes of the devotee who had the ritual practices he was very tolerant of anything that anyone wanted to practice so long as it wasn't uh, phys physically dangerous or causing suffering to other people. If, if, if you thought it was doing good for you, then he was happy for you to continue with it. And eventually, at some point, most people would come to the conclusion this particular practice has run its course, it's time to move on to something else. <laughs>